Okay, so uh, uh, you know that uh, development is dynamic in nature, and normal development requires tight temporal control of several events, so that important developmental events can occur at the right timing and in the right order. And, and I'm interested in understanding the molecular and quantitative principles underlying this, this amazing temporal control in development. And to do that, uh, we study uh, maternal to zygotic transition or MZT as a model. So the oldest stages of development uh, depends on components that are provided by the mother, but as development progresses, uh, zygotic control kicks in to take over the embryonic programs. And, and this process is called maternal to zygotic transition, and MZT occurs essentially all multicellular animals. Uh, but, uh, the, but how this transition occurs at the right timing has been a fundamental question in cell and developmental biology. So we are trying to understand this uh, outstanding question using Drosophila embryos as a model. So Drosophila embryo undergoes 13 rounds of divisions uh, before uh, MZT. And one of the remarkable uh, phenotypes that we want to focus on today is cell cycle uh, slowing, where you have dramatic lengthening of cell cycle uh, durations uh, from as short as 10 minutes to more than an hour. So uh, the question is how the progression of embryogenesis is sensed so that you can trigger this, this you can uh, trigger the cell cycle slowing at the right time. And, and previously, uh, we've shown that the, We've shown that uh, nuclear composition changes dynamically during early embryogenesis, and this plays a key role in regulating, uh, uh, the, in regulating uh, the timing of cell cycle slowing. And for example, uh, we found that a uh, nuclear concentration of a cell cycle activator decreased in later stages, leading to cell cycle slowing. Uh, but also, we, uh, we found that there are also other proteins that behave differently so uh, we are really interested in understanding how nuclear composition is dynamically regulated to allow for proper control of uh, the timing of cell cycle slowing. And today I'm gonna to tell you about a mechanism where nuclear transport plays a key role in this process. And I'm gonna focus in particular on the nuclear pore complex or NPC. And, and the reason why I want to focus on NPC, uh, nuclear pore complex is because we, we recently found that a, uh, the number of nuclear pore complex uh, uh, changes dynamically during early embryogenesis. And so what I'm showing you here is an endogenously tagged NAT96 GFP. And NAT96 is one of the major scaffold components of nuclear pore complex. So this uh, NAP96 GFP basically tells you about the abundance of uh, NPCs in the cell. And these, uh, these balls are individual nuclei, and this is a zoom in image of a single uh, nucleus. And what we found is that uh, the signal intensities uh, decrease over time, indicating that the number of NPCs uh, decrease uh, with developmental progression. And this is quite, uh, this is a very interesting observation, but obviously the next question would be how the decreasing NPC number affect nuclear transport. And I think there are a few possible scenarios. And one possibility is that there is actually no effect because it's, it's known that uh, NPC has really high capacity for nuclear transport. But uh, another possibility would be that you have a, you have a down regulation with, in response to a reduction in NPC number, which has been proposed to occur in some cell types. And finally, uh, you, in theory, you could have up regulation, although this is somewhat counterintuitive. Right. So to test these uh, different possibilities, I uh, decided to focus on a very simple synthetic cargo, NLS RFP, which is basically just a monomeric RFP with a short NLS uh, nuclear localization signal. And again, uh, uh, NPC number decreased with developmental progression. But very interestingly, we found that actually NLS RFP levels in the nucleus increase during this period. And more strikingly, when I partially depleted NPCs using RNAi, we had even more accumulation of NLS RFP in the nucleus. So this is uh, somewhat uh, counterintuitive and, and very interesting. So 
and, and uh, right, so, uh, so the thing is that uh, a reduction in NPC number uh, can lead to upregulation of NLS RFP import. Now, this is uh, quite interesting and counterintuitive. So, how about how could this happen? And when we say nuclear transport, there are actually two different processes. One is directional active transport that, uh, that depends on transport receptors, such as importing. And another process is uh, non-directional passive transport, where relatively small size molecules of less than 40 kD can passively diffuse through NPCs. And because these two processes are very different in terms of the underlying biochemical and biophysical mechanisms, uh, we wondered if NPC number may have differential effects on these, uh, uh, on these transport processes. So to test this possibility, I first looked at uh, passive transport and uh, we performed uh, FRAP-like experiments using an um, NLS hag dendra 2 marker. Here, dendra 2 is a very interesting fluorescent protein uh, whose food food color can change from green to red in response to UV light uh, shining, by, by shining UV light. And, and this marker is uh, basically nuclear localized because of the active import, but because of the small, small molecular size, uh, it can also undergo passive import and passive transport. And so by changing the color of this marker, uh, in the nucleus uh, by shining light and monitoring the loss of red signals from the nucleus, we were able to uh, measure the rate of passive export by looking at the initial slope of the curve. And so this is an example of this experiment where you can see a rapid, uh, rapid diffusion, of, diffusion of this uh, NLS marker from the nucleus. And we performed these experiments at different developmental time points and what we found is that passive transport actually decreased in later stages where NPC number is reduced, suggesting that NPC number does affect passive, passive transport. Okay, then what about active transport? So, uh, uh, so then we, uh, we uh, uh, calculated the rate of active import using a simple mathematical model. And I'm gonna skip the detail of the modeling part but uh, uh, I plot here, uh, 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 what I plot here is uh, on the x-axis is uh, passive transport rate and, and the y-axis active, active import rate. And so here, if data are plotted diagonally, that would mean that both active and passive transport changes. While if data are plotted horizontally, that would mean that there's no change in active transport. And here's the actual data. I hope you can appreciate that the slope is much less steep compared to this uh, diagonal, suggesting that active, trans active import doesn't decrease as much as passive transport. Okay, so uh, together, uh, basically what I think is happening is that when you have a large number of NPCs, uh, passive transport processes uh, can somewhat uh, counteract active import, but this effect can get weaker as the number of NPCs decrease because active import remains relatively unchanged. Uh, uh, active, active import remain, remain relatively unchanged, but passive, uh, diffuse, passive transport does decrease. So you end up with a more overall, you end up with more accumulation in the nucleus, even though uh, you are decreasing NPC number. So uh, uh, together, uh, I propose that the NPC number is a regulator that modulates the balance between active and passive transport process. Okay, and then finally, I wanted to test if these changes in NPC number have any meaningful effect on development. So to test this, I again, I personally depleted NPCs using RNAi and looked at how that might affect cell cycle dynamics during early embryogenesis. So what I'm showing here is, uh, uh, so X, here, uh, here the data and X axis is cleavage division cycle, which is basically the stage. And Y axis is cell cycle durations and blue is control RNAi and green is NPC depletion. And I hope you can see that overall cell cycle durations were longer when NPC was depleted 
suggesting that uh, NPC number uh, is important for the proper pacing of, embry of, of early embryonic uh, development. Okay, so to summarize overall, uh, in, in this work, we found that the number of NPCs decrease over the course of uh, cleavage division cycles, and this changes the balance between active and passive, passive transport processes. And because uh, different cargoes would have different dependencies on active and passive transport processes, uh, this would lead to a lead to dynamic and global remodeling of the molecular composition in the nucleus, uh, which would be important for proper it would be, it would be which would be important for proper development. Yeah, with that, uh, uh, so this work was done in the Amadeo lab at, at Dartmouth, and, and and I also want to thank uh, the people who helped me research throughout my postdoc uh, career, and I also like to thank the funding sources that helped that supported my uh, research. Thank you very much uh, for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks very much, uh, Yuki. Uh, so once again to the audience. Um, if you could put any questions that you have in the Q&A box, um, you could be happy to answer them. Um, and uh, as usual, I'll, I'll start off with a question. I was surprised at how uh, efficient and how quick the uh, passive transport out of the nucleus was. Uh, and it looks like you would really need to shut that down almost completely uh, to to have a significant biological effect, and I was wondering if you if there's any way that you can assess uh, at those later time points really the the um, in a quantitative way how much uh, passive transport there is left, how many of those pores are still uh, um, allowing passive transport. Uh, so do you mean in the context of um, endogenous car regulation? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's a great question. And so uh, here in this study, I use a fluorescent marker that has that it's small in size, yes. uh, that has very efficient passive transport. Uh, and not all endogenous cargo would undergo that those kind of passive transport process. Uh, but uh, if you if if you are to look at like the size dis the distribution of molecular size of proteome, about one third of proteins are smaller than the threshold value for passive transport. So, so I think uh, like the effect of passive transport on cargo regulation uh, is reasonably prevalent, uh, but, uh, but of course there is like a yes. more additional regulatory layer like protein complex formation and things like that. So uh, uh, at this moment, I don't have a really good sense of how passive transport really plays on physiological role, but uh, but yeah, but that's definitely the way to go, the way to go in future research. Okay, thanks, Yuki. So I'll go to the first question online. This one comes from Esther Kim. It says, great talk. In early pre-implantation pre mass embryos, cell cycle duration shortens across cleavage divisions. Is anything known about NPC numbers or nuclear transport in mammalian embryos? Do you think decreasing cytoplasmic volume during cleavage has a role in uh, NPC nuclear uh, um, NPC number control? Yeah, that's a great question. And and about if if it um, so the short answer for uh, the for for the question about if yeah. it is observed in other system like mouse. I, I don't know specific uh, evidence for that, but I do know that uh, and there is a ch change in NPC number in zebrafish embryogenesis. So uh, I, I, I think uh, like NPC level regulation of development uh, yeah. can happen in other cell, cell types. And, and also for uh, the second half of your comment, like if cleavage, cleavage has a role in NPC number control, and I, I, I do think so. Uh, as you know, uh, cleavage division cycle is very rapid. So uh, the the effect of dilution of the pre-existing NPCs uh, into dividing nuclei will have a play, would play a role. But also in 
embryos like flies and xenopaths, there's also a pool of NPCs that are pre-assembled on ER to sort of support the rapid cleavage division. So there are two uh, you know, processes that ultimately determine the number of NPCs during cleavage division cycle. Okay, I, I think you've really addressed the second question, which was, do you know anything about how NPC numbers are controlled over development? Um, so uh, unless you have something else to add to that, we can move on to the next question. Do you, do you... Okay, so the third question is, have you studied whether levels of cyclin D are more stable in nuclei with reduced um, no, uh, 93 levels? Uh, and is it known um, whether this process of nuclear pore remodeling also occurs in quiescent cells, in adult quiescent cells? Yeah, uh, great question. So we are trying to look at cycling dynamics in, in the same developmental embryo genesis context. Uh, so in, in, in the fly embryo specifically, uh, cycling B is more like a major uh, uh, driver of embryogenesis. So currently we are trying to look at cycling B and cycling B3 and cycling a, uh, but uh, but so stay tuned, and I'm I'm really excited to be able to answer your question in in okay. in the future. Uh, and yeah. yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, another one from uh, I apologize, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Shang Lan. Uh, beautiful work. I suppose most of your work's based on protein transportation. The work you showed. Do you know if there's any effects on mRNA exportation due to NPC number? Is that a regulated process for instance yeah that's a great question i haven't i haven't looked at uh, rna transport uh, yeah. yeah but okay. yeah but i i could imagine that the transport system especially especially npc is basically the sole gateway for macromolecular trafficking between the two compartments and that's not the, not the exception rnas are not the, not exception for that so it would be really interest it would be a really interesting direction to look at how uh, other macromolecules like RNAs and like perhaps I don't know viruses, other cargoes, how how they uh, okay. respond in 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 changing uh, NPC environment would be really interesting. Uh, Thank you. Uh, and so the last question comes from uh, Jonathan, um, a previous speaker, and he says, "Very cool." I, I a similar question to the earlier one uh, about the maximum rate of active transport transport per NPC, and does that maximum rate affect things at all as the number of NPCs decrease? Yeah, I think that's also a very interesting question. So it's it's sort of controversial if like the cell is reaching the like the maximum, the highest, you know, possible transport capacity, or uh, there is some sort of like if if it's saturated or it's not saturated, yes. so some some believe that NPC capacity is really huge, so NPC won't be a rate rate limiting step, or but some other reports that NPC does affect, and I think it might uh conclude so, so one conclusion from this work is I think that sort of depend context pathway dependent, so uh in my in in my research act for active import doesn't appear to change that much in response to changing NPC number. But that's uh, perhaps because active import uh, is, in, is regulated by many uh, complicated processes like transport, receptor, recycling, and energy cycle. Uh, but on the other hand, like passive diffusion is relatively a more simple biophysical process. So it, it's, it makes sense that the passive diffusion uh, is affected more directly by the number of NPCs. So, and so, yeah, so, it's like a more like systems property. Okay. Thanks very much.